Okay, I'm going to break this drawing down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can follow along, create this and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that you'll learn not only the painting process and techniques, but also about the app that I'm using Procreate. But that isn't to say that you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Oh, within the app Procreate, I'm using their A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. In terms of the color profile, I'm using again within Procreate their sRGB code, the one that ends in 2.1. Again, it's here within Procreate by default. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using only the free brushes that come within the app Procreate. So within airbrushing, I'm going to use the soft brush, the medium brush, and probably the medium hard brush. Within inking, I might be using the studio pen. Within elements, I'm going to be using the clouds brush. Within spray paint, I might use maybe this fat nozzle brush. And within organic, I'm going to be using a variation of the snow gum brush. And then the colors that I'm going to be using, well, I've already pre-selected a color palette. And each of these colors has what we call a hexadecimal code. If you go to the value section, you can see here hexadecimal with the code in this box. And each of these codes is down in the video description. So you just need to copy and paste them one at a time into this box, press enter, and the color will appear up here then you can just tap it into your own color palette. Or to save you that time, there is a link next to the codes in the description that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the color file for free. Save you some time. And Patreon is also the place where you can support this channel, gain access to exclusive content like extended versions of these tutorials, for example. Let's say a massive thank you to those people who do support me over at Patreon. It really has made a huge difference in my ability to keep going forward as a channel. So thank you so much. And with all of those things out of the way, let's get started. Now, one thing you might notice about the colors is they seem a little bit more saturated when you look at them on screen compared to them on your iPad. Don't worry, if you've downloaded the palette or you've copied the codes, the colors that you are using are the same as mine. They might just look a little bit different on screen, that's all. Okay, so on layer one, I'm gonna go to my colors. I'm gonna use the first color on the top row. I'm going to drag from this the color circle into my canvas and let go. And then I'm going to go to the second color on the top row. I'm going to go in with the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put the size at 40% and 100% opacity. And then just up in this top area, not quite at the very top, but almost, I'm going to put a band of that color. Then I'm going to go to the third color on the top row and reduce it down to about 10% size and 100% opacity. And then at about halfway on the canvas, I'm going to do another band all the way across. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that all in to about the 40% and deselect. And then I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer two. Now for this layer, I'm going to change brushes. So I'm going to go to the elements clouds brush, and I'm also going to change color. So I'm going to go for the fourth color on the top row. I'm going to have it at around 10% size and hundred percent opacity. And then just with circular motions, I'm going to start building in some kind of tufts of clouds to all group together. Now it's important that we kind of, use this type of emotion when we're adding them in. Now this is not something we need to take a huge amount of time on. I'm just going to be aware, I don't want to take it beyond the bottom of this area here. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap of that palest color just still remaining for the bottom edge. The bottom edge will be flattened out somewhat. So we can almost go in there first, create a little bit of a band that stretches across. We're only really going to be able to see this middle section by the time we've added in other elements anyway. Then we just create some round features over here. Just something a little bit like this, just to fill in that area, to create some kind of shapes here, very much the outer edge of that area, of those shapes. And this is just the starting tone. Don't worry about the edges, like I said. Maybe you could reduce it down from 10 
to 3%, and then you could have some smaller sections too, just to create some extra little articulated areas. And again, I'm not gonna to spend too long on, on this particular section. This is just something that we can build in relatively quickly. Now, I often say in my tutorials that, you know, the techniques I'm going for allow us to build up the effect pretty quickly. But if you do decide you wanna spend longer on any of these details, then please feel free to do so. It's not compulsory that you race through it at the same pace. And also, if you're finding it a little bit tricky to keep up at times, well, do utilize the pause until you've caught up and then restart it. Okay, so on that layer, I'm gonna tap on the layer. I'm gonna put on and activate the alpha lock. You know it's activated because there's a little checkerboard in the background of the thumbnail. And what that means is if we go to a brighter color and we just add it, you can see it stops at the boundaries, at the outer edges of the shape we've already created, which is great. So I'm not quite ready for the brightest color. I'm gonna go for the fifth color. I'm gonna stick with the clouds brush, but instead of the 10% we started at, or the 3%, I'm gonna put it somewhere in the middle, so maybe about 7%. And I don't need a 100% opacity, so maybe about 80. And I'm just going to start on some of these edges. Now, I'm imagining the sun is coming in this kind of a direction, so it makes sense that the light would just catch this part of the, the cloud first as a priority. So just go in there and just start with these edges. Maybe on this side, there's just an absence of that highlight. It's okay for that to just remain as a shadow. And then once we've done that, we can bring some of these sort of tufts, just as a few taps further back into these kind of areas. Maybe sometimes leave a bit of a gap and then start the tuft again. So we're just about creating texture really. Nothing is overly defined, not spending a long time on it at all. It's just a pretty simple and quick process. We're definitely preferencing those edges first. Once you've done that, then there's a bit more freedom to just add the texture around. I'm also gonna turn the opacity down to about 40%. And that just allows for a bit more subtlety as it gets towards the bottom it's just going to transition soften as it flattens out something like this and it's it's pretty rough at this stage and that's fine i'm going to go to the adjustments the gaussian blur and i'm just going to blur that in but not very much about three percent so it's just a hint we've still got the alpha lock on and i'm going to go to the sixth color now which is much brighter and we're going to turn that down, be a bit more controlled. So maybe 4% and maybe 90% opacity and just zoom in. And we're just going again, start with that edge where the light is going to catch the most at the top and anything that is on this side rather than that side. Once you've done all of that edge, sometimes that's not quite enough. It conveys something of the, you know, the shape and the idea. But then maybe the sections here so we can turn it down from the four to the two percent even and then go in and just further outline some of these shapes just give them a bit more 3d mass and shape just go around an imagined kind of edge here so i'm creating these types of shapes just to further kind of encourage that sense of round fluffy kind of cloud shapes really I'm not gonna to pretend to be an expert on cloud names and types, it doesn't really matter. We're just going for a generic kind of fluffy cloud. So we can start to see, we've built in a real kind of simple, but nice impression of clouds. And maybe turn the opacity of that down 50%, and put it slightly back up to the three. And again, just in some of these areas that are a little bit peeled away from the edge, we've just got some tufts. There's some little breakaway sections. Zoom out, check how it's looking. Maybe there's more light you wanna add, and I think I do, so I'm gonna put it up to 5%, still at the 50% opacity. It slits down to 49 or 51, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's close enough. And I'm just gonna bulk in some extra white, perhaps to this area, to get a bit more of that highlight in there. It's gonna be a very sunny day, so really we should reflect back quite a lot of light so i'm okay for it to collect into larger blocks of white as well okay 
So I think that will do for my clouds. I'm going to go to the layer, tap on it and turn off the alpha lock. That enables me to go back to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur. And when I blur at this time, maybe to about the 3% again, it's just going to have softened the edges a little bit as well. Deselect. And I'm quite happy with that general effect. The only section I'm not as keen on is the bottom area. And that's easy now. I'll go to the smudge tool, go to the airbrushing, maybe the medium brush. 4% size will do. 80% strength opacity. And just, I'm going to turn it just for ease. And then I can just do some passes along here and just soften in that bottom edge so it's not quite as textured it's just a softening blending in to that lighter color below and that's fine perhaps we could go back to our brushes use something like the airbrushing soft brush again go in maybe with the fifth color three percent size and five percent opacity maybe we could just add some very subtle streaks of a lighter color just to break up that background so it's not quite as flat i don't want to do too much of that just a hint of it is enough then we're going to go to our layers and we're going to create a new layer layer three go to my colors and i'm going to use the seventh color and i'm going to use the medium brush within airbrushing i'm going to put the size at two percent and i may as well have it at pretty strong maybe 90 percent opacity and i want to create a band a line that represents our distant horizon. So initially I can just draw a line. It can be wobbly, it doesn't matter. All the way to the outer edge, hold it until it snaps to a straight line. And then with the other finger, I haven't taken the Apple Pencil off the screen. You can see, tap it with the other finger, let go of both, and we've created a horizontal horizon line. Now, if you're not happy with the placement of it, you can go to the adjustments, or rather the transform, and you can move it anywhere you want. So I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap between the bottom edge of that cloud and that horizon line now just to make sure that we haven't left any gaps on either side whoops just stretch it and deselect I'm then going to go to the eighth color very with the same brush i'm just going to put it up to three percent size and 60 percent opacity and again i'm just going to rotate it slightly so i can do this run a line just slightly underneath hold it until it snaps it's gone quite away underneath actually and that's fine we can do another one keep adding these lines until we get one that's just slightly underneath there you go and that's created a series of lines already maybe go for the ninth color and i'm going to start adding this in there as well probably want to preserve a little bit of a dark line at the very top maybe the tenth color another line we're just kind of doing a series of these lines now Now, I don't necessarily want to get rid of the sense of banding. That is quite a good thing. But I'm going to go onto that layer and tap on it and put on the alpha lock. Same principles as before. It just allows us to now go over it and we can soften that in. So I'm using the 10th color. And I needed that really nice dark contrast between the bottom edge of the clouds and the sky and that horizon line. But it was a little bit too dark. So using that line now, I've just softened that in a little bit more. Then I'm going to turn off the alpha lock on that layer and I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur. I'm going to blur that in, maybe 2% will do, and deselect. Then with the 10th color again, I'm going to use the medium brush still on the same layer. Maybe put it up to 4% size, 20% opacity, and I can just build in this bottom section, just have it kind of smoothing out to begin with. So I'm then going to start moving to some of these more vibrant colors. So I'm going to go for the first color on the middle row and I'll keep the same settings. So we're still at 4% size and 20% strength. And I'm going to start now building in and it doesn't have to be straight lines particularly. You can just use your own, you know, judgment of a straight line. I'm happy for the closer kind of banding to be more undulating, a little bit less precise. I think if you did it in absolute straight lines, it won't look as realistic in fact so we can just do some lines straight across in these sections i'm allowing it to build down although we're going to have beach and sand areas here it doesn't really matter we'll just keep adding the banding i'm going to turn the size of it down to two percent maybe this area back here we could just have some further kind of suggestions of lines and bands and streaks in that water as well 
Okay, then I'm going to go to the second color on that middle row, 5% size, lower on the opacity because it's quite vibrant, quite vivid, so maybe 10%. And then this bottom section, we'll just introduce this color, allow it to gradually build upward. We don't want to take it extended too far because this is the kind of color that should really only pre be preserved for the shallower parts of the water where the sand starts to have an impact on the overall kind of color scheme. To so see, there's a good section here where it's quite dark and then we're introducing this lighter color and we've still got enough room for the sand and beach area. If you have found that it's extended too far down, well, it is on a separate layer. So you can go to the transform and if you need to just nudge it up, you can do two fingers backwards or you can go on the free form and you can pinch it up from that bottom circle and just squash it up slightly if you need to. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the layers. I'm gonna create a new layer, layer four. I'm gonna use the third color along and I'm going to use the spray paint fat nozzle brush. I'm gonna put the size pretty small at 2% and I'm gonna start quite cautiously at 50% opacity to begin with. And you'll probably find that there are some bands in there that are more distinct and we can go in there and we can just tap in and then stretch out a sense that there's perhaps just some waves you can allow it to kind of rise up it's more of a kind of crashing wave and then stretch it out and the good thing about this brush is it kind of fizzles out so you've done an area there and you can stretch it out and it's less potent when you stretch it out so we can stretch that this way scribble a, a kind of section in here and then stretch it along most of this is going to be covered so let's aim for more in the center area so i'm going to bring this along Tap it in a few times, stretch it out. And then as we get so closer to us here, we're gonna have more obvious crashing water. Again, I'm just gonna create a few taps. We'll zoom in a bit so you can see that perhaps a little bit more clearly. So we're just picking up on the top edge of a closer to wave. that's just sort of rolling and crashing. Perhaps we could turn the opacity down 30%. And then we can create another one that's just a little bit back from there another little section in here as well you can get smaller kind of folding over of waves it doesn't have to be big dramatic things at all and we can also go back in with something like the second color and that can be sort of combining with it so you can get and you can just sort of blend in some of these a little bit extend some of this color back in subtle streaks as well now the water the crashing waves isn't going to be the kind of focal point they're, they're there they're an important element but they are still background so i'm not going to overly work these areas i'm quite fine for it to be quite vague so go back to the third color perhaps we'll just have some points where it crashes down and it kind of comes in like this it kind of comes downwards and that's fine Again, extend that across. Tap it a few times so you get that more texture in there. And it's quite a nice effect. It's quite subtle. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. I'm going to go back to that second color. Maybe just as a section over here where there's some lighter, some more of this kind of color. It might be that the, the sand is just a little bit higher in a section. Just catching the, the light a little differently anyway just so it's not quite so uniform all the way across. Perhaps you could also go back to different colors, maybe the tent color again. You can add some more streaks of that in here, just adds, again, more texture for the water, more banding, which I think is an important part. Don't worry about these outer edges. You can afford to be very rough in those sections, it's not a problem. Maybe go back a color, the ninth color, some more of that back here as well. Okay, I'll come back to some of this, but I'm gonna move forward. Um, there's going to be more detail on the crashing water as it meets the sand, but I'm going to add the sand in first. So I'm, I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer 5. And I'm going to go for the fourth colour on the middle row. I'm going to change the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to put it initially at 10% size and 100% opacity. And we need to build in our kind of foreground beach. So I'm going to take it up. Not all the way to the water, but getting close to it. Something like this. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, 
Now I'm going to blur that in to about the 30%. And you can see it's just sort of blended with that blue green, that kind of aqua color, and then the beach, and it's created quite a nice effect. Again, we're going to fine tune some of that, but I don't feel the need to do all of it until we've got some more of the other main features sort of in place. So we will keep those on a different layer. So we'll go for another layer, layer six. This time we're going to change to the airbrushing medium hard brush. I'm going to go for something much darker, which is the fifth color on the middle row. And we're going to put it maybe at 5% size, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to build it in from the top edge first and build it down. And we're also going to bring it in over here. So we're just channeling our attention down to this central area. Maybe you can have a flattening out plateau and stick out a bit more into a shape in here. And you know, the beauty of this is that it's on a separate layer. So you're not actually destroying anything. You can amend and adjust this to your heart's content. Let's just be bold, block in some shapes. Now we need to try and imagine where it's going to ground, where it's going to meet the sands. So let's reduce it down to 3%. Maybe it just joins the sand maybe somewhere around this point but that isn't to say we couldn't have kind of rocks that jut out that are just assembled nearby flatten out here now i wouldn't do shapes that jut out in that way because it, it it reduces the sense that they're a little bit further away try to flatten out the bottom edge of them try to stick to the 100 percent opacity so press on a little bit harder for this if you get too many of this it's not going to look quite right so press on a bit harder you need the full strength of that color and then just fill in any gaps. You, know, you can have loose boulders, rock details as you please. And we're just creating almost like a silhouette, just the, the basic placement of where we want some of these shapes to be. And it takes a little bit of imagination to almost imagine the overall finished thing, but you know, nothing's set in stone, so to speak, although it is stone. And we can amend this as we go along. So don't overly worry about it get something in there initially and then we can always adjust it later. Perhaps we'll not have this flattening out, perhaps we'll have a, a kind of slight raise in the sand here. It's not quite as flat looking all over. Something like this. Again, maybe just a couple of rocks that live in these areas. Why not? Okay, so we've got those basic structures and shapes. We'll go to the layer and we'll tap on, put on alpha lock. We'll go back to our colours and we, we've used this one, the fifth colour, so we're going to go for the sixth colour. Still with the medium Let's just double check the medium hard brush yet yeah, 3% size and I'm going to dial it back a little bit to about 80% strength opacity and we can not worry about the outer edges because we can't extend into the sky we're trying to create a series of angular forms now within this overall shape so I guess what I'm looking for is to create some shapes like this and then you know ones that jut in next to it maybe that go at different angles but roughly things that have edges and straight lines to some extent anyway blocks angular shapes and blocks that all kind of fit together but again nothing that we do here is absolute and we can always go in and divide this up with darker colors again but it's just quite a nice way to start so you can put in big bold shapes initially and some smaller ones just to break that up and having that darker colour emerging through just is suggestive. You can start to imagine splits in rock and things like that. That's why it's important we start with the darkest colour. Maybe turn that down to 2%. Start with the darkest colour. Then, you know, we're already getting a sense of some of the splits and some of the, the gaps between these sections. Then maybe we've got ones that lie on the ground. Leave a little section, perhaps where there's a shadow or a changing of the angle. Again, I'm not really spending a huge amount of time on this yet. Just getting a, a general sense in there. And that's enough. And probably needs to be even more subtle on this side. It's going to be slightly more in shadow. Again, think about where the light is coming from. The light is going to hit more on this one than it is that one. We're still going to use this colour, but we're going to turn it down 40% strength. Again, just create some blocks, very rough shapes that all kind of sit together. Leave some gaps here and there. Much of this we can probably have covered in greenery anyway. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to move along to the seventh colour. Still the same settings, 
slightly warmer tone for some of these areas i think that's important if we get closer to us we're going to have a slightly warmer impression maybe on this edge we've just got a slight warming up a different hue to some of this so it's not all completely the same you notice i'm really not spending a lot of time obsessing about the details on this it's just creating a general effect now i feel like we're not actually encroached on the the middle area as much as we could so perhaps we can do something with that so i'm going to go to the selection tool freehand i'm just going to grab a whole section close the loop now i'm going to go to the transform and i'm just going to move it this way stretch it this way from that circle at the outer edge of the box just so it encroaches on more of that middle area Got a bigger area to play with then. Just deselect all of that. Selection again, draw around this, close the loop, transform again, and then from this little box on, or circle on the box, I can drag it, bring them together a little bit more until you're happy with it and deselect. And you can see it really narrows our focus. Now we've got a smaller area emerging through. I might create a new layer, but this time tap on it and put on the clipping mask. Now if I use a brighter, more vibrant color, like the ninth color. I can add it, and again, it stays within the confines of the things we've already created, but it is on a separate layer, which is great. So I am gonna use this ninth color. I'm gonna put it down to 2% size and maybe 60% strength. And I'm just gonna imagine that this light, sunlight is super strong, and it's gonna start hitting this edge quite dramatically. And I can just start to Create some sections here at this edge and at the top where the sun is just catching bits of this rock and creating a strong highlight. And now we're starting to add that colour. It brings in this real sense of strong summer daylight into the overall colour palette. And it's a really important colour in the mixture here. So we can just add it along some of these top edges for these shapes. Zoom out, zoom back in, keep checking some of these top forms. Perhaps we can start to lose some of these what remains of the darker colour. Again, think about some of these flat angles. You can create some more edges and shapes in there. Perhaps we could even go down to the rocks. Again, just create some lines, some shapes. And just a few bits of that tone can really go a long way. I'm going to turn it down to perhaps even in the 1%. These shapes are not looking particularly rock-like in some places, so we're just going in there now. And it's things, it's using these highlights that is going to really start to build that impression in places. Now, in addition to that, we can also use the fifth color. And we can start to define some of these splits and angles between these shapes as well. So we had them very roughly put in there, but we can start to just define some of these gaps and some of these lines in there as well. Fragment it up slightly. You don't want to do too much of that. It's going to have to look like something that could still hold together. It'll be coherent as a, a kind of mass. So you don't need to undermine the kind of structure or the look of the structure too much. Or just some subtleties to create some angles and shapes in there and that allows us then to go back to the highlight and just think about what we've got create some highlights at the top edges of some of these shapes now some of it will be you know at different levels you might get a bit there that just is further forward and then a bit underneath it so perhaps the highlight there on top doesn't make as much sense you can just preserve it for some sections that are just a bit more prominent and as well as that brightest colour, we can go back to the seventh colour and we can have that in there too. It doesn't all have to be the strongest of highlights. It can be different tones, different strengths. Zoom out, check, see how it looks. Again, in a similar way that we added the initial shapes, you can just go in there and just continue to add kind of blocks that jut up to each other and create like a gap between them. Nothing needs to be overly labored over, I don't think. 
Again, you create these sort of gaps and splits. And we're going to add a lot of greenery in here as well. So don't overly, don't get so bogged down in this area that we spend hours just on one element that you end up having to cover up anyway. So just get a general sense of it. I'm going to use this. So what color are we on? We're on still on the seventh color. I'm going to use this now to start adding more detail to some of these rocks on the ground, for example. So I'll put it up to higher on the 2%. And being quite bold sometimes is quite useful. You don't need to be too timid. Now I'm going to come back to some of the rock details. I'm going to create a new layer, layer eight, and I'm going to move along to the organic snow gun brush. Now I'm going to reset it so I can show you what I've done. And I'm going to put the spacing to 20% and the jitter to 40%. And I'm also going to go to the color dynamics. I'm going to change the hue variation from seven to and the darkness to none. And that allows me now to pick maybe the first color on the bottom row and just go in there. Perhaps I need to reduce the size somewhat. So maybe 4%. I can go in there. I can start to put in some circular shapes for the greenery and it can go over the very edge. It can cover up large areas of this rock anyway, which is why I'm not overly concerned with getting into the detail of it initially. I knew there's going to be big areas I'm just going to completely cover up anyway. So we can really just go to town, cover up large bits. Let's maybe put it up to 5%, cover up big sections of it. Now this isn't the overall finish. I'm going to add some highlights to this. Just like we added to the rocks, we need a strong sense of highlight on anything that is in this area. So I'll perhaps leave a section at the top where we still see the stone, but there's just a huge area here where it's got greenery on it, 6% size. Then I'll probably go to that layer and put on the alpha lock and I will go to something more vibrant. Perhaps I'll even go to the fifth color, which is really vibrant. I'm going to stay with the same brush. I'm going to put it to maybe 4% size and less potent, maybe 50% opacity. And initially we can just be careful, go in and take away any of that darkness along that top edge. We don't want it to look dark there. And you can start to see the impression. So the highlight on the stone and the highlight on the green areas combined together really works. Perhaps we could just take off the alpha lock now, actually. Turn it down to 3%, still at the 50% strength. And we'll just have that creeping along this edge in areas. Again, just take away that outer edge of that dark green. Just tapping it in, as you can probably hear. Perhaps I'll even turn that down further, maybe 30% strength. Circle and tap. As it kind of comes around this area, it's going to be slightly more subdued. We're just going to start with this outer edge. Make sure we get the strongest of lights along there. And then just do a series of shapes that are just blobs. Let's just bring these together in a stronger highlight as well. Keep zooming out, checking what's the effect looking like. You must always do that in whatever form that you're working, whether it's a, a real canvas with real paint and you just step back and have a look or whether it's this and zooming out. It's such an important part of a process is just to check, see how everything is working together. Now these colors are very vibrant. We might need to do something to just slightly subdue them, knock them back a little bit, but we'll just get them in there initially. Again, we need some gaps between these. So that's why I'm just doing it as kind of little blobs that are just a little bit separate from each other. You can always have them merging together. And like over here, for example, I can keep adding them on top of each other. So then you get a larger section that is very bright. Um, I'm quite happy with some of that effect. It is a little bit vibrant. We could always put back on the alpha lock, maybe go to the last color, 10th color on the middle row. Go to something like the airbrushing soft brush, 5% size, 10% strength or so, and just slight pass over that. And it's just gonna cool it off 
ever so slightly and knock it back just a little bit and you can see if I take that away super vibrant put it back on it's just subdued it somewhat turn the alpha lock back off go back in there with the organic snow gum brush again back with the strongest highlight I don't mind adding some back in there over the top and that can do for that section I'm going to do something similar over here as well so we're going to go back to the first color on the bottom row with the snow gun brush back at maybe five percent size 80 percent strength and again i'm just going to put in some green areas over here and that can overhang and again we're probably thinking this area is going to cover it up completely and this top area I think I'm not going to see that top edge anyway. Which is why, again, you can see I've not spent any time on some of these rock areas. There's no point. We're just adding other elements that are going to completely cover it up anyway. It would have been a waste of our time. So there you go. Turn it down 3%. That's a little bit of a tree here with some branches that are just shooting out more green areas. Something like this. Okay, so that's the shadow color. And then again, we're gonna go for the vibrant color. So the fifth color. And I'm not gonna put on the alpha lock. In fact, again, I'm just gonna go for this top edge. Perhaps I'll put the opacity down to 40%. I have to build it up slightly more gradually. I'm not gonna see much of this top area. We're gonna again cover that up with something more foreground. And I'm gonna get a sense of it. Just highlights at this very edge. Perhaps I'll turn that up 8%. Smatter that in a little bit. Let's go back to our greens, in fact. Let's go to perhaps the third green. And we can even put the brush size up, maybe 10%. We've got some just suggestion of larger shapes in here as well. Again, I'm not overly fussing about this. We're creating an effect without having to spend a huge amount of time on the smallest of details okay and just use this to sort of blend it in a little bit in places okay i'm going to come back to some of these details the rocks definitely need a bit more work but we're going to move forward get the other elements in place and then see how much is necessary and needed anyway so i'm going to create a new layer and there is another section here with has more greenery so i'm going to go for the eighth color Still with the snow gun brush, same settings, maybe 7% size, 80% opacity. And again, I just need to establish a slightly closer to section here. Just take it up there, perhaps. Some on the ground. Again, put on the alpha lock. Again, go to perhaps the fourth color along. 4% size. Let's go 80% opacity, why not? And I'm just bringing these slightly further forward. We have the alpha lock on, so we don't need to worry about being particularly neat. And this will just jump forward a little bit more compared to those. We're going to allow the more vibrant colors to remain in relation to any of that anyway. And again, we're going to go for the fifth color along. And again, we just need this most vibrant color just to really show off the highlights along that edge. Some areas it's going to be more apparent than others. And you can see it is more vibrant. We cooled that off before. This is more vibrant. We'll do something similar with that side soon. There you go. Perhaps we'll go and turn off the alpha lock. That allows us just to finesse some of these edges a little bit. Okay, I'm not really going to do that along this edge, maybe just a little bit there as it pokes through. I don't feel the need to do as much over here, maybe just that outline just there, and that's probably enough of those extra details. So I'm gonna to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer 10. Okay, this time I'm gonna go for the tent color on the middle row. I'm gonna go in with the airbrushing medium brush, 3% size, 
100% opacity. And well, we're gonna have some green areas over here, but I feel like we need to create a sense of shadow as well. So I'm gonna build in a shadow around some of these areas over this side to begin with. Build in a shadow over here. Perhaps turn that down now to the 2%. And as we come over this side, this whole mass is creating a shadow. And we're gonna have this extending into the sand a little bit over here. And I want that to be quite crisp, quite distinct. When we get to some of these edges, we can just have it more kind of nibbled. Some of the greenery and other things and also the undulating and ripples and different kind of directions that the sand will take it will mean that some of this edge is just going to look more textured. You're not going to get a really clean edge like this. It's going to be just a little bit more kind of nibbled looking, as I say, for various reasons. Now, in addition to that, once you've created that shape, you can go to the eraser, set the eraser to the medium brush, 1% size, 100% opacity, and you know, we can also just have sections where we remove it too. And again, it creates a sense that maybe light's coming through some of the green areas, and I think that really creates a good effect. Maybe do it with the soft brush. It is a slightly softer look then, so 2% size, maybe 50% opacity. It softens it slightly. I think that actually works a bit better. And it just reveals the sand colour through. We get slight more breaks and gaps in this kind of shadow and even just that small addition I think adds quite a lot perhaps we'll go back in with the brush and you know we can just add little hints here and there that we're getting some more of that shadow in here as well don't need too much of it over in relation to these stones but just a hint so it kind of shares the same kind of color and language and then we're going to have more sections here just at the very edge a tree that we're going to add in here as well so we can already start with its shadow. So we'll start with a 3% size, 95% opacity, whatever, 100% would have been fine too. Bring these in as stretches that come through here. Just decide where you want it to start to peter out, something like that, and then we can turn it down 2%. And again, here, just create a sense that it isn't quite so straight more dappled, just like the textures of the, the leaves themselves, I suppose. The shadow is going to reflect some of that, so let's put it down to the 1%. And again, just that kind of nibbled edge. I'm keeping the movement sideways, like it's stretched out, really. I'll also put it up slightly higher on the 2%. Zoom out, zoom in. And then, well, we've got another area here. Perhaps we could go back in with the eraser. Set the eraser to the soft brush as we did in this section. 2% size, maybe 70% opacity. Perhaps even smaller on the two, actually really quite low. 1%, let's try that. And then in a similar way, we're just going to remove sections of this, maybe it can bulk together to be a bigger gap. A few smaller ones amongst it. I also put the opacity up 100%. Let's really go for it, in fact. Bring back some of these shapes in here. And you start to get a sense that it is really just the shadow and dappling of light coming through in that shadow as well. I think the, the dappling of light in and amongst the shadow is a really important part of it. But there you go. The thing we're gonna do is create a new layer, layer 11, and we're gonna create a tree that is responsible for this shadow. So we're gonna to go to the medium brush within airbrushing. We're gonna go for this color, which is the sixth color on the bottom row, 4% size, 100% opacity. And well, I'm just gonna have one that's sort of clipping in at the frame here. Maybe thicken that up a little bit. 
Now, if you find that it's just covering up too much, then again, we can go back to some of those previous layers. So maybe layers six to nine, we can pinch them together. Now they're all on one layer. We could go to the selection. In fact, we probably need to turn off the alpha lock first, rather. Go to the selection, freehand. Again, just grab all of that, close the loop, transform. And again, we could always stretch it out a little bit more. I don't feel inclined to do too much of that. Maybe just a hint more will work. Deselect, slightly adjust to the shadow, but it's not a problem. We can tweak that later. Back to layer 11 anyway. And again, back in with the medium brush and that dark color. And then over at this side, we're gonna have another tree branch trunk that sticks out. And then on the tree trunks, we're gonna add some bright colors. So maybe I'll go in with the shadow color. So the 10th color on the middle row. Perhaps I'll go to the soft brush for this with an airbrushing. 3% size, 20% opacity, in fact, even less, 10. And again, I'm not spending a huge amount of time on this. Just create some texture. We can do the same for this subtly. Then maybe go for a warmer texture too. So go back to the seventh color as we get closer to that edge because the light's coming from this side. So it's going to create more of a highlight on this edge slightly warmer texture. And then I'm gonna go for the ninth color on the bottom row, low on that 2%, maybe about 30% opacity. And I'm just gonna start bringing in suggestion of a highlight here in places. Perhaps go for the 10th color on the bottom row even, just in places. Now that's a little bit yellowy, so maybe we could subdue that slightly. Go for the ninth color on the middle row. And it brightens it up even more, but it also just subdues that warmth just a little bit too, which I think it was a bit too zingy. So that's a little bit better. Perhaps just a little bit of a highlight along this edge. It's just gonna be reflecting back the sand, if nothing else. And then also back in with the ninth color, just to blend those two together a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to that whole layer and I'm gonna go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I'm just gonna blur that in maybe 5%. Okay, we're gonna create a new layer. Because we've condensed some other layers now, <laughs> we've actually seen to have gone backwards in terms of the layer numbers, but whichever, we're on layer nine now. I'm still gonna go in with the snow gun brush. I'm gonna use the first color on the bottom row, 20% size, 100% opacity, and just near the top, I'm gonna to create some leaf shapes, like so, and then just at the very top up here, just clipping it a little bit, encroaching into the space, I just want some of that. Perhaps we can go to that layer and just duplicate it. So it doubles it up, it makes it extra strong and duplicate it again. And it just thickens those, makes them more dense and then pinch them together so that they're all again on one layer. Now I'm gonna create a new layer and put it underneath layer nine. And I'm gonna do something similar again, but with a more vibrant color. So I'm gonna to go to the third color and then do a little bit of that color, not too much. Again, pinch them together. Whoops. Create a new layer. Again, put it underneath. Then I'm going to go for the more vibrant color, which is the fifth color. And just a hint around the edges of this. Not too much of that though, just suggestions of it. And then we can go to that, those two layers, just merge them again. So Again, the foliage is just on one layer and we can go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in just like we did with the tree trunks. Maybe it's about the 5%. And we don't need to keep all of it. We can decide how much of it we want to obscure. So I think I'd rather have the tree trunk. So I'm going with the eraser, put it to something like these soft brush is fine. 3% size, 100% opacity. And I can just remove that, push it further back I want the trunk to be more important than the foliage on that side. And again, on this side, I can do something similar. I can just bring it further forward, create gaps. And of course you can thin out these as much as you like. I feel like that's encroaching too much with the highlights. So just remove some of that. I'm gonna create a new layer, layer 10. Again, forget the numbers, doesn't matter. It's a new layer on top. 
if we get a doubling up or you know multiple layers with the same name we can always go for tap on the original layer 10 rename it and we can put shadow if it gets too confusing on this one tap on it rename it we can put leaves and then on this one it is the only layer 10 now so i'm not going to rename that one and then on this layer i'm going to go in with the airbrushing medium brush and i'm going to go for the sixth color on the bottom row and maybe four percent size 90 percent opacity and just around the base of this tree i'm just going to introduce a kind of mass initially just get a general kind of shape that's encroaching in here maybe turn that down to two percent now i'm just going for the general shape first then we can just control it maybe just something here something in this area okay then i'm going to go to the organic snow gum brush put that to 10 percent size 100 percent opacity and just a hint of that in here just at that top edge not too much just to start to give it some organic kind of life then i'm going to switch to the inking studio pen go in with maybe the first color on the bottom row and i'm just going to start bringing in some shapes just a few kind of suggestions of things in here just some leaves suggestions of kind of tropical things on the beach there doesn't need to be something that is overly labored on just get a suggestion of a few things in here again we're going to blur these in slightly so we don't need to overly fine tune these perhaps we could just have some shapes that are slightly less well defined just maybe turn the opacity down 40 percent 30 five percent something like that just creates a sense that there's stuff growing down here maybe go for the that will go over to this side we'll go for the eighth color just a hint more vibrant again you don't need to overly articulate any of these things at all really to still get the effect not actually necessary perhaps i'll just put the percentage up to 70 percent have a couple of these sticking up why not on that layer i'm going to put on the alpha lock and then with the airbrushing soft brush maybe with this color still so the eighth color five percent size 30 percent opacity and i can just go in there and just add hints different tones in here to add a slight variation so it's not completely flat looking but then i am going to go to the turn off the alpha lock first i'm going to go to the adjustments gaussian blur just blur that in just so it matches the trees somewhat so blur in maybe three percent deselect and now we can start adding some textures into the sand area and also the bit where it joins the rocks too so again another layer layer 11 go to the original layer 11 and rename that trees return enter press onto the new layer 11 and we're going to add some sort of particles in the sand area so we're going to go in with the medium hard brush go for perhaps the eighth color on the bottom row two percent size 80 percent opacity and yeah just some things in here perhaps we can even go back to that really darkest color actually so the sixth color it is quite dark but i'm just adding some things in the shadows here things that have either fallen from the tree or little shells or stones doesn't matter use your imagination as to what they actually are Perhaps we'll go for that color so we'll try the fifth color on the middle row and then maybe that's a slightly better color actually not quite as black then and that works not super dark then and this is just the way we're going to color them when they're inside the shadow and then when they're outside the shadow perhaps we'll go for something warmer so we'll go for the ninth color and then we can start seeing them in a slightly different way outside of shadow so when they're in the the brightest of the sun they just have a different quality perhaps again it's just another way of selling the impression of the light and we can just get a smattering of these up here as well in this area and again in the shadow over here we'll go back to the fifth color maybe we could add some more in this area too A 
So we'll just go in there and redefine this shadow to, we kind of lost some of that a little bit. And as well as those little rock details, we perhaps we need to go in there and start redefining some of the, the crashing water here in the very area. So I'll probably create a new layer for this, layer 12, and we'll go for, whoops, we'll go for the third color on the middle row. And again, we'll go for the spray paint fat nozzle brush, 2% size, 70% opacity. And as we come into this area, we can just create some kind of turbulent kind of crashing water here. Perhaps we ought to put this lower down so we could drag that underneath layer six, which has the rocks on. And that way we don't need to worry about it colliding with the rocks and interfering with that. Let's extend some of this a little bit further back again. I'm not overly articulating this. It doesn't really matter too much. You can keep it kind of rough, quite vague. A little bit of an impression can go a long way. And then we can just bring in some streaks of this to join the other areas too. Going with the eraser, eraser set to the soft brush, 2% size, 100% opacity. And if you just want to just chip away at some of that and just reclaim some of the, the blue areas as well, you can do that. So it's a combination, adding and removing. And I think that is quite effective. Now, some of these rocks look a little bit strange on their own. They need a little bit of a shadow. So go in with the airbrushing soft brush on this layer, might as well stick on the same layer. Go for maybe the sevens color along, 2% size, 40% opacity, and maybe just give that a sense of grounding, kind of reflection shadows, whatever. Maybe even some of this 10th color. Got shadows here, so we just need some of that in here as well. It doesn't look too out of keeping with everything else. Same with this one. So now you can go in here, spend a bit longer on some of these rock details, and you can always just keep it on a separate layer. So we've got layer 10, we've added more of the refinement. So I might just keep it on that layer. In fact, I'm going to go in with the soft brush, go in with the fifth color on the middle row, low on the 2% size, maybe 50% opacity. And I'm just going to go in there and perhaps even lower actually into the 1%. And I can go in there now and I can just define some of these rock shapes, split them up a little bit more fine tune things if I'm not entirely happy with it. I'm just going to fine tune a little bit, but leave it relatively rough. As long as we've created the impression, I think that actually we've done quite a lot. Just fragment these up a little bit more. I'm going to go to the one of the highlight colors, maybe the ninth color. And again, just ramp up some of these highlights. Might just go along to the third, no, the fourth color, in fact, on the middle row. 1% size, maybe 90% opacity strength. And I think I might just ramp up some of the highlights in these areas. I don't want to overdo it, and this is risking overdoing it, but yeah. I like stronger contrasts and highlights, and so just a couple of, of those, I think, goes a long way. I think one just last touch, I might go back to the layer that I renamed leaves, this layer, and I'm going to go to the adjustments, new saturation and brightness. I'm just going to turn the brightness from 50% down to 45. And I think it just sets the balance of it a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to leave this tutorial here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Don't forget to hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. It all really helps out the channel. So that's much appreciated. And I shall see you back here soon. Bye for now.